it has given me everything and more than all it has given me immense satisfaction there are huge good things which have happened in the last 60 years but many bad things have happened and really i am proud of our country and uh, people from our country have earned great names in india and elsewhere we have taken to the villages by this panchayat raj act only corruption and politics the dream of a great country that the my country will become a developed country by 2030 India should encourage rural liberalization. Topic of the episode is transformation and the organization at focus point is HCL. Transformation and punishment are different. Punishment is an action looking to the past. Transformation is also an action but looking to the future. Transformation doesn't look for punishment it rather looks forward for advancements and betterments Story of Ashoka is a story of transformation Stories of all great people are stories of transformation Story of HCL is a story of transformation in every action Every transformation gives a new dimension to the way ahead Diversification and diligence in performance after every transformation is fabulous the achievements that accumulates after every transformation is outstanding and countless punishment or transformation we look forward and work for transformation it's a trillion dollar economy which has been created by 2 20 million indians but all these only kept increasing the distance between an urban india and rural india these are the two worlds that we talk of 70% of india is rural what is the definition of rural rural means a place where there are possibly not more than 10000 people who live something which is called like a town in the united states where a typical likelihood is there will be a government run school there won't be a private school india's population is about a billion people out of which 300 million live below what we call bpl below poverty line that means it's less than 1 dollar a day of income the children don't go to school but the urban india which grew up in middle class and contributed a lot to india's gdp 72% of that is living in urban india that means a town or a city 70% of rural india only could contribute to 30% that means abject poverty lives in rural india i will just show you a clip of how a child child's life differs between a city and a village
every Indian is either wrong or not strong enough to correct the wrong. Collectively, we are strong, not individually. Together, we are strong enough to transform India to a superpower, not to defeat the world, but to transform the world. We have proved our might at freedom movement. We got freedom without taking weapons. Fighting for peace is the largest blunder the world had ever heard. This is applicable for the world, for nations, organizations, also for individuals. Transformation is the underlying principle of the three and a half decades saga of Hindustan Computers Limited and all establishments under the banner of HCL. Transformation begins when progress stagnates. Tomorrow need not be the same as yesterday and today. Be ready to face tomorrow with new ideas and ideologies. This is the message HCL spreads with their performance models. HCL works on a single thought. Throughout last three and a half decades, the thought is to excel at every area in business development, in society building, HCL leadership directly involved in social development activities. Hello and welcome to CNBC TV 18 and Lufthansa special series all for this one moment. I'm Shireen Bhan. Over the next 30 minutes we celebrate the success of one of India's top business leaders. We understand what made them who they are. We trace their journey to this point. Before we move on and bring our guests out for this evening, here's a look at the life that they've led so far. Shibnather call him Magus, that's Persian for wizard. A small town boy with big dreams, Nather has spent the past 25 years battling the odds to build an organization that has many firsts to its credit. His risk-taking ability is legendary and he's often made daring forays based on his conviction of the future. That vision in 1976, at a time when India had a total of 250 computers, has resulted three decades later in creating a $5 billion global enterprise. HCL is today a leader in the IT industry, employing 56,000 professionals, has a global presence in 19 countries and a pan-India presence across 360 points. Shibnather firmly believes, if you want to empower people, give them the tools. There's enough entrepreneurship in this country to take care of the rest. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the chairman and founder of HCL, Shiv Nader. Okay, let me start with my first question to you. Everybody that we've spoken to who know Shiv Nader say that the man has achieved what he has because you cannot say no to him. Is, is that a fact? It's probably true. They've been very generous at So what is it that doesn't allow people to go back unconvinced? What is it about you that you manage to persuade them, sell your argument, sell your point of view? Number one, the idea should be strong enough. And number two, they must have thought, you know, this guy, the best way to get rid of him is not it's to say no. <laughs> Agree to it, otherwise he'll keep coming back. And you do keep coming back, don't you? you if there is an opportunity that you spot, if there is something that you want, you will go up. Until the time we get it. You never think small, you always think big. And before I actually get you to respond to that, let's talk about how you actually started. That your mother was really your true inspiration. I believe you were uh, one of eight children and that you were the closest to your mother and you lost your father very, very early. What was childhood like for you? Because as I said, you know, you never think small, you always think big. And for a small town boy to think of a $5 billion corporation, how did it all really start? You know, when I step back and think about it, something which I call boundaryless thinking, uh, I must have got this inculcated from my mother. She gave me a lot of latitude in doing what I did. And not once she ever told me that this is not possible for you. You know, I tried to build a tennis court. When you were 12? When she looked at my eyes, I thought that anything would be possible. So when we went about doing that, after a defined number of days, there was a tennis court and we did play tennis on that with 
virtually no resources. Not having resources is something which is all in our mind. Excellence every moment. It comes true in the case of HCL. Yesterday, it was a slogan of employee first, customer next and managers at risk. Today, the slogan is multi-management, giving way for anyone to everyone combination. Tomorrow, it may become an innovation now model. Something like assemble your thoughts and build your project instantly. In HCL, anything is allowed if it can be followed. HCL wanted to give differentiated values and experiences to the customers. The first question we asked ourselves is, what is the business HCL is in? And the answer to that question is that we are in the business of creating differentiated value, differentiated experience for our customers. That word differentiated is very important. If you can get the same experience from our competitors, why would you come to us? If you can get the same value from our competitors, why would you come to us? So the word differentiated was very important. Okay, we get it. Second question, where does this differentiated value or differentiated experience get created? And the answer was very interesting. Actually, it gets created in the interface of our employees and our customers. And that's the value zone. And then we asked ourselves the third question, which I think was the most important. So if our employees in that value zone are creating the differentiated value, which is critical for our growth, what are the managers doing? What should the business of managers and management be? What should be the social architecture of the organization which can succeed? And the answer was that the business of managers and management in this structure, in this social architecture, has to be to enthuse, encourage, enable the employees to create the differentiated value so that we can grow faster. That's exactly what we did. Oh, Paji. <laughs> Paji, chota sa business tha mara. Aapki IT ne to. Hame international banana ah. Thank you. Ab aap log dunia bhar ki health industry mein bhi chhare hain. Great job. You're the dude that designed this game. Oh. Yeah, man, and the chip inside too. Hey, our sky's a lot safer, thanks to you guys. Mercedes here. Mr. Banker, can I have my jacket back? <laughs> <laughs> That's all this while I was wondering. Oh, one sec. Maybe you should just leave it on. It gets a little cold here. No, I was wondering how do you manage this? Oh, hi. hi. You work for HCL. I have this new Miley. Can you just find it? From India to across the world, HCL's technology touches lives everywhere. Guhantara, a new world under the earth created with human imagination and creativity. A perfect cave living model with all modern amenities to relax and to recreate. The first and largest cave resort in India spread under three acres of land with playgrounds on top of it. Gohantara is beyond your imaginations, an ambience which existed 5,000 years ago presented to you with modern facilities. Once you come in Gohantara, never goes out of your memory. Gohantara, Kanakpura Road, Bangalore. by narrow domestic walls. Into that heaven of freedom, my father, let my country awake. I love India! Missionaries always get fired from outside. At the very same time, dreams become a fire from inside. The visionaries, the first one fires and the second one inspires. Firing kills and inspiring thrills and finally the fire inside inspired and the visionary wins the dream this is a story of every success including that of HCL 
a fire in the belly and a visionary zeal that leads it was 35 years ago on 11th of august 1976 mr shiv nadar with five of his friends left their secure job and started working with a dream the dream was to transform the way we compute that eventually a transformed our way of life the beginning was a joint venture with uttar pradesh government name of the company was hindustan computers limited it was one among the first public private partnership model in india the business was focused on manufacturing computers here started the journey of hcl pioneers to the computer world over three and a half decade the company expanded into everything that matters more hcl infosystems hcl insol nit hcl consulting hcl pirot hcl dilux hcl comnet hcl office automation hindustan computers limited had to be abbreviated to hcl and the company went on to expand and spread across the globe three and a half decades expansion brought in over 88000 employees the corporate profile is set around two brand names hcl technologies and hcl infosystems the beauty of hcl leadership is their continuous dissatisfaction in what they are and ongoing to go further much faster and diversified hcl as business interest hcl as social interest HCL has interest even at art and culture. Wealth doesn't fascinate them too much. What fascinates is innovation at extended scale in technology, in creativity, in humanity. HCL is ready to listen to you. HCL is interested to interact with you. This is something unseen normally with growing organizations. Do you wish to replace something? create dissatisfaction about it first this will create a need for change the second step is to present the new idea you should create passion among the people your ideas and vision should become their ideas and vision a complete merger with everyone in the project there is an hcl model that india can adopt it will transform the present day crisis to an opportunity to conquer making the employee first it's he hell i've done that in a large scale just a shift in the social thinking pattern isn't everybody an employee isn't the president of america and the janitor and the ceo and all of you your customers your employees everybody is an employee if everybody is an employee and employee is the one who's going to solve our problems why are we not celebrating being an employee and if we start celebrating being an employee and get the employees back to work why can't we fix the economic issues why can't we fix the innovation issues why can't we fix the emerging market issues we can we just have not taken the step forward of celebrating everybody is an employee hcl broader outlook is like this everyone is an employee the president to the peasant the insider and the outsider everyone plays an important role in formation and transformation organization and nation are same in this aspect who is at action is important who bring prosperity is important a nation should consider all the citizens as employees of the nation among them are the people who bring prosperity to the nation put all officials into the shoes of managers hcl philosophy says it is not the managers who bring success success comes from the employees when india employ people for success officers should manage success it is a duty of officers to make things happen in my mind there are four elements which are coming together which are going to change the world forever the first is this whole issue of changing economy and formation of new normal the us inability to decide on what package they need to do to get the economy up the europeans inability to face the truth and understand that there is a big issue and therefore we see a problem coming out every day 
India's inability of taking a decision because they are lost in scandals and corruption. Middle East inability of getting the economy rocking because there are governance models which are changing in that country. Japan struggling with a 200% debt on GDP. And that brings me to China. I had an opportunity of meeting the Premier at Dalian a couple of months back, and he said four things which shook me up. He says, my biggest problems are, number one, corruption in my party. Number two, my party's interference in governance. Number three, lack of growth will create social unrest. Number four, China has to move away from lending money to investing money, and the world has to allow it to do it. If you look at leaderships, leadership in countries are not able to take decisions. The second perfect storm is the emergence of the emerging. Remember, the word globalization was defined as the West moving to East and opening the markets. And suddenly in the Western world, the goods and services of the emerging markets became more valuable than they were ever before. A new renewed confidence came in the mind of these emerging market countries and companies, and therefore they started asserting themselves. The third perfect storm, as if it was not enough, is changing consumer. Their buying patterns are different, their influencing patterns are different, their view on brands is different. 90% of their decisions get made on the digital web, and 90% of the decisions get influenced by word of mouth and not by anything else which we are used to. They are culturally sensitive about how products and services are delivered to them. So more and more consumers are asking different products and services at different price points to be delivered with different experiences. So the existing investment in brands, in brick and mortar, in products and services are being tested as never before. Because newer and newer innovation models are coming, companies are born daily and competitions are emerging daily and with changing consumer, they are able to attract that consumer, and with that consumer, build a completely new company, which, you know, we didn't want to give them space to create. So that's the third perfect storm which is getting created. The fourth is the changing employee. In the end, we really thought that if we have all the problems, the employee is the person who is going to solve all the problem. So even if you have an idea which you want to implement, you need people to implement, and either they are a people in the wrong structure, or the wrong people, or they are completely disengaged for you to execute it. And therefore, when I see, when you put all these four elements together, you have a sense, I have a sense, that we are in a situation as never before, and there's a perfect storm. Most profound impact on India, what you have, will be the uh, onset of technology and its acceptance by the people of India because it's a very intelligent nation, because it's a very educated nation. And when they accepted the spread, will make the democracy completely root-based. Okay. Now, this is, a, this is a very profound thinking, and I'm talking about this is transformational thinking. What I'm amazed to see is you know, I've lived in this country, and I'm born this, in this country. What I'm amazed to see is, this year, India completed its village-level elections. Village, town, city, province, and then the federal government. Most of you know about the federal government, but the real country is in the villages. The elections have been completed everywhere, and now you can say, this is the largest free market in the world. Unquestionably, it is the, the large. When, you know, in the previous splash, when they said that 40 million middle class is getting added every year, and that is equivalent of Argentina, many of you would remember, in 1935, Argentina's per capita income was the same as the United States. Companies working really hard to do it. I don't know if they've succeeded yet, but I know they're working really hard. It's an Indian company, an IT services company, one of the fastest growing, most progressive IT services companies in India, tens of thousands of employees. And, and, and their whole management model is built on the principle of reverse accountability. 
Now, a lot of companies talk about, you know, turning the pyramid upside down. Like, I, that's mostly rhetoric. But these guys are really trying. Let me give you a few things they're doing. This is the company, by the way, where every employee rates their boss and their boss's boss, and all those ratings are published online. When it came to kind of updating, reviewing their strategy, they took all those, like, secret corporate strategies, they distributed them out across the employees. 8,000 people got involved in helping to comment on and build their strategy. That's kind of reverse accountability. Uh, also, they have a, an interesting little ticketing system in this company. If you're a first level employee or at any level and you disagree with a decision from your boss or, or you, know, you think you've been treated unfairly by HR, it's taking too long to process your expense claim, you know, any one of those internal departments that you don't think is serving your, your, yourself very well, you can fill out a ticket on them. And uh, so here's my complaint. These tickets, by the way, are visible. They're transparent across the organization. And that ticket can only be closed by the employee. So the manager has to come back to say, like, what's your concern? Let me understand it, see if I can fix it, or at least tell you why it's this way. And then you can say, okay, I get it. Thanks very much. You close the ticket. Any ticket that doesn't get closed in 24 hours gets escalated to the next level of management. That's reverse accountability, right? People holding their managers accountable. Are you really helping me succeed in my job? And the reason in this company they think it's so important is in that business they will tell you that all of the value is created at the interface between the employee and the customer. Management's job is to encourage the innovation there, but they, they explicitly say to employees, you are more important than your managers. In fact, the mantra of this company, HCL Technologies, their mantra is employees first, customers second. How often have you heard somebody say that? And in fact, the CEO of Anit uh, Nair, he stood in front of his, his customer group, CIOs from big companies around the world, and told them, I'm sorry, for me, you don't come first. Because unless I take care of my employees, they're not going to do the right thing for you. Sometimes even small problems irritate us a lot. In a large and fragmented organization, we sometimes lose focus and end up ignoring people's day-to-day -day problems. What we have here is the SSD the smart service desk. I had some problems with my loan foreclosure. Uh, I, you know, I asked a couple of people, how do I go about it? I clicked on the SSD, I raised a ticket, and my problem was solved in, I think, few hours. Initially, when smart service desk was formed, we had around 15,000 to 18,000 tickets in a day. Some were relevant, some were non-relevant, some were of serious concerns. We were quite uh, hesitant and we were resistant of implementing it because now we were going to be evaluated on the basis of the number of tickets that were raised on us and uh, the time taken to resolve them. But I think over a period of time we learned that it was really a way of improving our services and delighting our employees. It was not an easy task to get all of our acts together to solve those uh, issues and uh, today I'm happy to report we are able to solve uh, almost 98% of our tickets within 24 hours. I'm empowered to raise the trouble ticket on anyone in this organization and once it's resolved only I can close it. Now that talks about the unique environment that we have here. It's just become a way of life for us and we're really happy to be part of this revolution. I'm very, very happy and proud to be a part of Employee HR Services. Cheers. I believe if you look at the history, there are three elements which are very interesting in making successful transformations. The first is creating dissatisfaction with ourselves of today. Unless there is a significant amount of dissatisfaction, how do you expect the company to even start thinking about change? Forget about answering the perfect storm question. The second is to create a vision of tomorrow which is so compelling that people will jump out of their bed and want to go and work for you, want to work for that vision, want to go and do it for you. What is that vision? And in that vision, what is in it for them? Do you have that? 
So if you have the dissatisfaction and you have the vision for tomorrow, then you can connect the, th the two with small experiments, not big changes, with small experiments, and that would create magic and that would create transformation. 